Hello, my dear friends, this is Coxta with the third part of my basic thoughts about religiosity and aggressive atheism. This is about my own philosophy. I posted a month ago my deconversion story. Uh, you can take this video as a logical follow up to this story. My the conversion story is in four quite short parts and it's funny. Yes, it's funny. <laughs> the, uh, I link it here below, so that will be the uh, first four links. The fourth link is an answer I gave to Ogre6, it's about the will. I was tagged. I linked this video because it's the result of my life philosophy. So, let's go on. In the 60s, the mostly sexual revolution, the hippies, uh, so leading stars like the Beatles went to India to find enlightenment and guidance from some famous guru stars. Experimenting hallucinogen substances and reciting for hours mantras like Om Mani Padme Hum or Nam Yu Q uh, by pretending having found the ultimate way of the New Age religions and awaiting the Age of Aquarius. They had all kind of New Age beliefs, rediscovered old pagan rituals and practices. Nobody at this time was ready to say that he was without religion. With all those New Age beliefs, so admitting being without religion was replaced by many fancy denominations and drugs were a big part of all this. This is only an introduction to come to my main theme, my experiences with Buddhism, Taoism and Hedonism. I experienced in many years that to understand these dreams you have to take only the root philosophy and clean it from all religious and cult-like practices. Call me simplistic and yes, so I am. Let's start with Taoism. The base of Taoism are the writings of Lao Tse. We can forget the legendary construct around the person Lao Tse. Was he real or not, or is his book, The Tao Te King, only a collection of popular wisdom? For me, this is not important. Only a little remark. I think the prince from Machiavelli is very much influenced by the Tao Te King by turning it to its opposite. The Tao Te King are 80 short rules how to live together, how to arrange your life better and healthier. The second book is the I Ching or I Ging. I Ching, I think, is a good pronunciation for you. The I Ching is supposed to be an oracle. By tossing sticks or coins, you will have a combination of signs sending you to a specific chapter of this book. The goal, how I understand I Ging today, without any need to go back and to refer to it, is that you are in an eternal movement and everything is in an always perpetual change. And now it's about time to explain the famous Yin and Yang symbol. This sign is the symbol of perpetual change. The full Yang shows always the seed of the birthing Yin in it. So the Yin shows the seed of the birthing Yang in it. In any situation of your life, you are somewhere in this always repeating circle. This is all what you have to know from Taoism, and you should stop here with this basic knowledge. Taoism as religion has not stopped here, but built on 
a no less ridicule construct upon this base. The first step in this construct was to observe nature, and more especially animals and their specific behavior. I will give you three examples. The tortoise, or the turtle, let's say the turtle. It's one of the longest living animals on Earth. The question of the first old constructors of Taoism as religion was to watch the turtle and imitating their movement. Imitating the movement of the turtle's head to make this an exercise to live as long as the turtles do. Second, the crane. A crane can eat poisonous frogs without dying. That's what they observed. So imitating the crane by standing on one leg was believed being an exercise against poison. Last example, the deer, or more specifically the sexual power of a deer who is in charge to inseminate his whole flock whilst at the same time fighting against his, his uh, rivals. So there are exercises to construct the prostate with the muscles of your asshole to imitate how observed the deer is doing. There are a lot more of those exercises imitating different animals' behave, like uh, the monkey, the bear, and so on and so on. I practiced these exercises for years until I learned their nonsense. Don't laugh, because Tai Chi and Qigong are coming from these exercises. This picture is me in Hong Kong in February 2000. I, it was my last lesson session in Chucky Chan's mother and father's uh, Tai Chi school. An important thing to say, some of these Taoist practices can be dangerous. As an example, to keep the Qi, the energy, some exercises are for women to stop the menstruation and recycle this energy in the own body. And for men, the technique to ejaculate, not ejaculate, to keep the chi of the sperm in your own body. For me, this resulted after five years of practice in a painful penis thrombosis and three weeks of permanent erection. Yes, it's funny, but a thrombosis can kill anywhere it is in your body. So, here in Taoism you can see that from a simple good philosophy, a big strange and dangerous cult and religion has raised. A religion with all their prayings, masses, monks, nuns, chapels and temples, and rules for behave and how to live together. Now, Buddha and Buddhism. Being a Buddhist was a good excuse not to follow a Western religion. Not to go to church and telling everybody that yes, you still have a faith to show everybody that you are still religious. A fat Buddha in your house floor and sometimes burning some frank eye senses are mostly enough to bluff people who know less than yourself about this religion. Again, let's start with the origin. The prince Gautama Siddhartha, the later Buddha, the real one, uh, not uh, Keanu Reeves, so the one before Keanu Reeves. So Siddhartha was kept away from everything outside his palace. He grew in the belief that everything was like in his reduced world. The day he left for the first time his palace was also the first time he saw and noticed the multiplicity of the world. He coming from an extreme wealthy origins noticed for the first time the opposite, the extreme poverty. Here again, like we have seen for Taoism, there is one statement, 
one single philosophy at the base. Let you give uh, me, let me give you my interpretation of Buddha's enlightenment, of his nirvana, of his wisdom. When Siddhartha remarked for the first time the extreme difference between rich and poor, between healthy and sick, he practiced in his Hindu tradition some exercises in a similar manner how today's yogi are still practicing and meditating. His manner was sitting under a tree and meditating. Letting apart all legends and supernatural claims around his person and this meditating session, the result was no more than if you have enough from everything, you are happy, healthy and wise. All too few is as bad as all too much and stop! This and only this is Buddha. Buddha did not teach the Japanese sword art, and neither the Zen arc shooting kendo, nor he knew something about Shaolin. He didn't teach to turn prey roads, burning essences, playing singing bowls or gongs. Today we know much better. Too much food and drinks kills as often as hunger and thirsty. And the lack of humanity of social cohesion is the result. Yes, Buddha teaches that a more equitable distribution of wealth is benefit for us all. Today's understanding of Buddhism as exercise to become desireless is a very bad satire. And this leads us to my third philosopher, Epicurus, and his hedonism. Hedonism is probably the most misunderstood philosophy ever. Thanks to Plato and his fight against everything contemporary to his philosophy, contributed not only to make Christianity philosophically possible, but also destroyed everything possible what was in contradiction to his own philosophy. Not only Epicureanism and Hedonism, but also many other thinking schools. Maybe we will have the chance in the future to find back some of those philosophers during the excavation of Herculaneum. Uh, Herculaneum was the richer Pompeii and there are still some libraries to excavate, if there is money, and hopefully before the Vesuvio breaks out again. As Hedonism, due to many bad propaganda from Plato and the early Church Fathers to our time, many people understand an unrestrained life, understands an overconsumation of drugs, alcohol, food and sex. Also here we have to go back to the elementary teaching of Epicurus, of himself. Back to what he teaches during his walks in the garden. He teaches happiness and modesty to live with the nature. In his own words, water and bread contributes more to my health and happiness than anything else. He was a Stoic and teaches the right balance of life. Yes, he is the third to teach us the right balance of life, the between too much and not enough. My friends, I close here without a closing statement because it's my philosophy I try to explain here. I'm not a missionary for my style of life. Ask you if our extreme rich fellows are really more happy than I am. Living without fear to lose something, this is freedom. I still have wishes, but I know I can realize them because these wishes are humble. I need 8 gigs of RAM for my computer to gain more time in editing and rendering. Maybe in 2 months I will have saved this 120 dollars. 
or I need new hard disk because all mine are full with material I need to do my vids. So maybe February, March, I will, I will maybe have saved this $160. Even this is important to have some small wishes left. Who knows? Maybe one day a partnership will also be possible for me here at the Arts of the World. Watch my links, comment, rate and subscribe. My friends, caress you and thank you very much.